at that moment, like my parents and I, we just gasped. Like we, we couldn't, we lost our breath. We were like so surprised because this is the first time I got an actual official division one offer. The Voice wanted to explore the impact the pandemic has had on sports recruitment. We talked to seven current and recent Palo Alto High School athletes about their experience. Here is what they told us. So my first question is what sports do you play and what made you decide that you wanted to play it competitively? So I play basketball and I've been playing it ever since I was super young. Having that love for the sport kind of pushed me into wanting to play the, the next level. So I play golf. My dad got me into it, I think, when I was around eight, I want to say, or six or seven, I don't know. I remember going to the range with my sisters and just hitting a bunch of balls and I really loved it. I was like, this is so much fun. Up until I think I was like 12, I was playing a bunch of different sports and eventually I figured that golf was the one I wanted to continue to focus on. And so I played more competitive tournaments, got better. Well, okay, so I started volleyball when I lived in Japan. And then when I moved here, I started to play club and like fifth grade so from then on it just went I just kept playing club and then when I went to high school it was like I had the opportunity to like want to be recruited so I'm a rower and I row out of Redwood City and basically the reason I started rowing was because I ran um, cross country and a little bit of track freshman year and then I developed this heel injury it's called Seavers apothesitis it was just basically from overuse and in my sports medicine class there's this kid Sebastian it's just this avid rower guy always talking about rowing and so I was like you know what I'll try it out and ever since then I just really love the sport. I play lacrosse and I first started because one of my friends was trying out the sport lacrosse her mom wanted her to play and so we all decided to try out. I guess I just loved it so much. I play field hockey. When we moved here the one thing I told my mom was that I would only move here if there was field hockey somewhere and so there was. I wrestle. I think that Wrestling competitively was just like second nature for me where if I was going to try hard to do something, I was going to be competitive in it. I've always considered myself to be a pretty competitive person, just like with everything I do, like even if it was like a little like a competition in class or a family competition or something like that. Anytime that there's competition, I get pretty competitive. So how do you think your ideal of the recruiting process was changed by the pandemic for like not being able to meet officials or meeting them at competitions and sporting events. I think recruitment for everyone was super different this year. And personally for me, it was even more crazier just cause I was um, injured my junior year. So my recruitment process started around after sophomore year of high school basketball, where I kind of was coming off a really good season. And then I played club uh, basketball where I came off an even better summer season. And I started getting interest from a lot of schools. And then a couple months later, I tear my ACL, which is, you know, you're out for nine months. So then I had to call those schools and tell them. And, you know, they kind of gave me like, oh, they kind of gave me the positive outlook, like, oh, you know, We'll still keep in touch and hopefully you know your uh, recovery goes well but then after that i didn't hear from them at all and the only other school that stayed with me was a d3 and i personally believe that you know i was i'm supposed to play at the d1 level i know that i work hard and i know that i can perform at that level but i mean it was nice to have you know a d3 there and just you know have someone as a backup but you know for a while that was my only choice and then I was supposed to, you know, start playing back last summer around June and July, which is the big viewing tournaments, NCAA viewing tournaments, but then all of that just got canceled because of COVID. It was like my comeback time. I was supposed to prove everyone all that. I had to work on posting more stuff on social media and to show that, you know, I'm back and I'm ready. And I finally got a call from a couple schools. Some of them weren't as interested in me, but they just kind of had me as a backup. And then I got a call from Cal Poly from their point guard coach and we had a great you know hour talk and you know after that she said oh can we get on a zoom with your parents and you and usually you know in regular recruitment you go on official visits where you go to the school and you meet the coaches you meet the team they take you around the school but with covid we had none of that so we weren't really expecting anything big going into this zoom meeting because it was just different for everyone and you know we ended up talking to the coaches the whole coaching staff and we talked to them for an hour and a half so we went like way over time and then at the end is when they offered me at that moment like my parents and i we just gasped like we we couldn't 
we lost our breath. We were like so surprised because this is the first time I got an actual official division one offer. And golf coaches were not allowed to come watch us, but even with COVID, I mean, golf is not entirely like contact sport. So I would say it wasn't too difficult because you just send them swing videos instead of them coming to watch you. I still played tournaments. I still kind of traveled because my family was up to it. I know a lot of people didn't travel because of the pandemic. And I mean, I feel really lucky that we were allowed to do that. And it was just a good move. My family and I actually took a trip up to Oregon, played a tournament which I got second at led me to get into a tournament here so I was allowed to just drive 15 minutes to Stanford my home course and play a tournament there so it was just traveling this summer really allowed me to do that and play well at that tournament and then got me into a bunch of other tournaments so the pandemic I guess didn't really change a lot for golfers. I think the main difference was my experience might be a bit different to like D1 athletes because I think their skills mean a lot more but the coach that I was talking to told me, I was like, oh, oh, I haven't really had a chance to play. You know, COVID's happening. What if when I finally get to the school, you see me and you think my skills aren't as good as you thought they were before? And he said, honestly, that's the case for pretty much every athlete. And what we're really looking for is what kind of person you are. He was saying that character mattered a lot. <laughs> that might be a, either a difference or just something that kind of came out during the pandemic was that it's not really how you play but also what kind of teammate you'll be were you still able to go to in-person sports competitions during the pandemic my situation is a little bit unique in that my parents are very very covid cautious and very worried about covid and based on where I finished up last season during the actual like high school season and stuff, I was just just short athletically of having like the wins and the accolades to to really get the offers from the schools that I had been talking to for a while that I was really considering. So I have been living on my own to an extent for the past seven months. For three months, I was living in an apartment by myself and training and I, I split time in the apartment and then I would go spend weekends in Morgan Hill and like live with some of the college guys and train with them and then come back. And I did this so that I could both continue practicing with, cause it's wrestling, it's a contact sport. So you, there's inherent risk of transmission of COVID. And then also, so I could go to like out of state to compete. And so over the summer, I went to a tournament called Reno World in Oklahoma, which is usually in Reno, not in Oklahoma, but they rescheduled it because Oklahoma is pretty open. And so that was for recruitment. And then I've been to a couple of other tournaments since. I actually wrestled last weekend in two days ago in Clovis, which is Fresno basically. And so I, I've been able to compete to some extent. I was talking to a lot of schools in the East Coast, right? But I couldn't go to the East Coast just because of the pandemic. And I also couldn't play that whole time, like practice, all the tournaments got canceled. So the whole thing I was just doing was just talking to coaches on the phone. And the major thing that made me choose to go to Pomona in SoCal was that I could visit and that it was close to home. Being home so much made me realize that like, oh, I don't really want to like leave to the East Coast and I want to stay here, so. Without being able to meet Meet a lot of coaches in person. How were you able to establish a personal connection with coaches? Did you have Zoom meetings? Like for example, with Stanford, you were, um, I guess you were able to meet with the coaches somehow before you got an offer. In the beginning of my recruiting process, maybe like sophomore year, I attended a ton of camps and tournaments. I think I flew out to the East Coast maybe like 15 times in one summer. They saw me play a lot. So colleges can contact you after September of your junior year. So once September 1st came around, I was like bombarded with Zoom calls. I know some people actually skip school because they have so many calls scheduled, but thankfully like I, I couldn't miss school. So I just kind of took all my calls after school, but yeah, it was Zoom, FaceTime, text, email. It was all digital. What tips do you have for future athletes that you know, are interested in getting recruited to colleges, both virtually and in person or either one or just in general. Number one thing I tell them is you want the coach to know who you are. You want them to like see your name in their inbox 
and be like, yeah, I know that kid, like, damn, he's updating me again. And at the same time, though, you don't want to be like a pest and continuously emailing them, but you want to email them. Like I, I tell my friends, you know, every two or three weeks is like very, very good. And the coach will know you and they'll they'll see that you're you're very consistent. Keep working hard, even if the pandemic wasn't happening. So keep training hard every single day. I would say be proactive in the recruiting process, send them film, whatever you have, even film yourself practicing outside of, you know, just regular club practices or tournaments. One thing that really helped me, I created a lacrosse Instagram account. So a lot of coaches would follow me. They would see what I posted. I would string girl sticks. I would post the drills that I would do outside of practice and they saw how competitive I was outside of practice and how dedicated I was. So I think that really helped.